Good evening, everybody. It's December 14, 2023. Thank you for all of your questions and comments on my last few videos. Um, I watched a video, a documentary, a day ago. And um, I've been actually ruminating on it. I watched it again. I, I really actually want to watch it again. Um, it is called The Discord Leaks. It's a full documentary on Frontline. It aired December 12, 2023. It's a PBS, a Frontline PBS broadcast here on YouTube. And they investigated how a young Air National Guardsman named Jack Texera, T-E-I-X-E-I-R-A, allegedly, well, he actually did, allegedly leaked classified documents on the Discord chat platform for over a year and why he wasn't stopped earlier. Um, they said that this journalism is made possible by viewers like you to support them. It was one of the biggest leaks in government secrets in the U.S. history. More than 300 pages that included highly classified information from secret Pentagon assessments of the war in Ukraine to revelations about Iran's nuclear program, Chinese aircraft ca carriers, and the killing of ISIS, T-E-R-R-O-S, you know, the, those, those nasty people. The leaked documents, which came to light in April 2023, were posted on the gaming and chat platform Discord, allegedly by 21-year-old Jack Tixera, who had managed to get a security clearance despite of a troubled past. What was his motivation? Why didn't the military stop him? And what was the role of Discord, a privacy-oriented platform popular with teenage gamers? Frontline and the Washington Post investigate those questions in, quote, the Discord leaks, unquote, from an award-winning team that includes Frontline directors Thomas Jennings and Ann Wong and Post reporter Shane Harris, Samuel Oakford, and Chris uh, I'm gonna get this not not gonna get this name bad, wrong. Uh, Chris Dagenpour. The documentary draws on months of groundbreaking reporting by the Post, including access to hundreds of the leaked documents its reporters obtained. The documentary includes new collaborative reporting from Frontline, revealing in greater detail Texera's online world and his history of violent threats, racism, and conspiracy theories. The documentary also features exclusive on-camera interviews with the alleged leaker's close online confidence, confidants, Discord's VP of Trust and Safety, and a former head of the Air National Guard. The Frontline Washington Post investigation raises tough questions about how the military's vetting process addresses applicants' internet activity and how Discord policies on hate speech on its platform and why the alleged leaker, who has pled not guilty, wasn't stopped sooner despite multiple red flags. To illustrate the extent of the leaked material, Frontline and the Washington Post used images of classified documents in this film that had been previously released in news reports on social media and elsewhere on the Internet. The Discord Leaks is a Frontline production with two over ten media in association with Washington Post. The producers and directors are Thomas Jennings and Aunt Annie Wong. The director is Thomas Jennings. The Washington Post reporters are Shane Harris, Samuel Oakford, and Chris Dagenpour. The senior producers are Dan Edge and Frank Cohan. The executive editor of the Washington Post is Sally Busby, and the editor-in-chief and executive producer of Frontline is Rainey Aaron Rath. Explore the additional reporting on the Discord leaks on their website, which is thewashingtonpost.com. So I'm going to get on with 
what I learned from this documentary. First of all, this 21-year-old young man is an IT tech that was hired uh, by, what is it, the Air Force. He actually received a government security clearance, despite the fact that he did he didn't have the best history. He had somewhat of a troubled history. I don't know what the troubled history was. It didn't go into the troubled history, just that it was somewhat ignored. So he was given a job. Um, he's an IT tech, so he had access to you know computers and all the equipment and stuff like that. Twenty one year old kid. But this kid also, in addition to his job, he was on Discord on a gaming platform with a bunch of friends all the time. He was on for hours and hours and hours. I got the impression that he was also on Discord while he was employed. Like, I mean, during the time that he was working. So what ended up happening was... um. The server that they were on has, they have 600 members. So this 21 year old was part of the 600 members on this server. Now, please forgive me. I'm not all that technically adept. I was on discord once because somebody guided me there and I just looked at it and I said, this is not for me. I deleted my account, got off of it. But evidently, it's a gaming platform, and some of the games are violent. I looked them up, folks. They're all like military games where they're, you know, offing people, like unaliving people, and combat and weapons and stuff like that. I mean, you'll see some of this on some of our widely known uh, cyber stalkers uh, within the targeting community. I will just leave it at that. But while I'm watching this and watching these kids, these youngsters, these 17, 18 year olds, he was 21, spending so much time on this gaming platform. And I'm thinking to myself that these are the same kids that may be hired now or in the future, or perhaps some of these games that they're playing are not just interactive amongst themselves. Perhaps they're interactive and um, linked to targeted people in some way. And that these people are unknowingly harming real-life people. I'm just putting that out there. You can call it a conspiracy theory. It's my theory. It's a possibility. So anyway, this guy... He ends up leaking intentionally, oh my goodness, 300 documents. He knew at some point that what he was doing was wrong. So he started to correct his actions. So rather than um, taking photos at work, he was taking the photos at work, he was photographing them at home. He was bringing them home and photographing them and uploading them to Discord for all of his friends and stuff. So this was already when he realized that what he was doing was wrong but was doing it anyway. Already brings us to January 2023. But he started uploading. He started putting notes on Discord back in uh, February, uh, September 15, 2022. So I want to play a couple of little clips from here where, where they're interviewing his friend. But before I play this, I already, fa I already listened to this. I fast forwarded to the end. And they were interviewing a female whose face was covered. You could only see her lips. And it was quite profound what she said for such a young woman. She said, 
when you are on Discord or social media a lot, you lose a lot of what normal socialization is. When she was interviewed about Jack's behavior and stuff, the common thread was that he was naive and immature. Naive and immature. Yet he was quite brilliant. He was smart enough to be hired with a security clearance at the age of 21 working on IT. He was an IT tech. So he's got to be a really smart kid. But he's naive and immature. I've said this before, folks. You mix immaturity, the naivete, and perhaps a little personality disorder in there in in an adult body. Okay, this is a 21-year-old who's quite intelligent. And you've got trouble. You've got a lot of trouble. And this kid... He's not a kid anymore. He is in big trouble. Like, he he was arrested. I highly recommend that every targeted person watch this documentary. It's 53 minutes long, but I'm going to play a part of it for you. And you will find, when you listen to this, a lot of things are going to click in your brain, in your head, about being targeted. And how it could happen, and the platforms, the social media platforms... That targeted people could be slandered, defamed, and I believe that Discord is one of them. So I'm going to show you this, folks, just so you can see how what these kids look like that they're inter- they're interviewing here. To build a place where you can game, talk, and ultimately belong. So we built Discord, and you loved it. By the time Tashera got into trouble in high school. The chat platform Discord was surging in popularity with gamers. You made Discord into a home, a place for you and your friends to hang out in. Discord was started in 2015 by game developers Jason Citron and Stanislav Vizhnevsky. We came up with it. Okay, I just want to say that a place where gamers could call their home, where people can hang out, okay? So remember what... This female friend of his said, when you're on Discord, social media, a lot, you lose a lot of what normal socialization is. And a lot of the people that are on here are naive and immature. This idea of what if we built from scratch an amazing voice and text chat experience for people that play multiplayer video games. And, and that's what we built. It's called Discord. It quickly evolved and became a place for users to create communities known as servers with no advertising and little oversight, relying largely on users to moderate problematic content. It's going to happen in your in front of the Jefferson statue. We're going to march to... I, I, I just want to apologize for the noise. You'll like hear static. Uh, the criminals have destroyed my laptop and... Um, My fan is broken. I need a new laptop. So there is going to be clicking here. So, you know, before people leave comments, like, I can't hear it. I can't. This is the best I can do, folks, uh, on this. The monument with the torches. As the company grew, it came under fire when white supremacists began recruiting and organizing on its servers, most infamously for the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, Virginia. John Redgrave is Discord's head of trust and safety. After the Charlottesville riots and the Unite the Right rally in 2017, it was found that there were people who were organizing on Discord. Look, the Unite the Right... Okay, I I want you to make note of that, okay? Now, when they say people were organizing on Discord, I mean, remember, these are not only adults that are organizing on Discord, there are a lot of people that are gaming on Discord, and uh, this guy, Jack Texera, and his friends were in a gaming uh, chat or whatever it's called, and uh, it, it got pretty serious, guys. Right Rally was a really challenging moment for Discord. I was not part of the company at that time, um, but it was the impetus for Discord to build a trust and safety team. We have 150 million people using Discord every month. Is that incredible? 150 million people 
using Discord, which is a chat and a gaming platform. Right? That's billions of interactions, right? So the scale of this challenge is immense. The company has defended itself in the wake of the intelligence leaks and the ongoing problems with extremism, saying they represent isolated bad actors on a platform designed for privacy and community. We have taken the stance that um, a lot of these spaces are like text messaging your friends and your loved ones, and it's inappropriate for us to violate people's privacy and we don't have the level of precision to do so when it comes to detection. To me, this is, we're a city, right? Discord is a city, right? We have all these people who are trying to find friends in their city and they're going and, you know, playing sports, right? They might be gaming, they might be, you know, uh, studying together. In any city, you are going to have problematic pockets. Sam Oakford tracked down one of Jack Teixeira's friends from Discord. He wanted to be identified by his online name, Pucky. Pucky is someone that I heard about very early on. It took us a long time, many, many months, to track him down and identify him by name and then get in touch and then convince him to meet with us. Okay, so now this is one of his friends. And let me just show you up close here. I mean, you see how young he is, right? Pocky is now 19. This is the first time he's spoken on camera. Now he's 19. Now. There we go. Let's start when you first encountered Discord as a platform. I think it was in seventh grade. I was still using Skype at that point, and my really good friend at the time were like, we should ditch Skype because everybody's on Discord. I formed a habit of being there a lot, texting, but also speaking. And then June 2020, that's when I joined Oxide. Look at this. Look at this content, guys. Oxide this is, is a what YouTube the... channel featuring Russian guns, body Look armor, this. and military hardware. I'm sorry, guys. If I have a, a teenager in the seventh grade, I don't want him playing these kinds of games on the internet. I mean, am I wrong? Am I just, I mean, just I'm the wrong generation? What's the deal? This is fun. We want our kids. This is what we want our kids playing on the internet in the seventh, uh, seventh grade. Look at this. Viewers who like the content can then join a server on Discord, Oxide Hub, which in 2020 had thousands of members, including Jack Teixeira. We were stuck inside that summer, so we were just all online playing games. So I searched for other places to be. And then that's what brought me to Oxide. And Jack was there. And we hit it off personally. I remember him being, he was, he was a cool guy. So I'm not going to play too much more of this because um, I, this is a documentary. It just came out and stuff. But I want to give you this little clip here. I, I highly recommend you're listening to this from top to bottom. Because there are quite a few gems, quite a few gems in here with leading to these are the types of people that would be employed to utilize software online to harass targeted people. Also, being in a social media situation like this, where they're using military weapons, they're watching them, they're desensitizing these young people to violence. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's a tragedy. Um, 
I don't understand how these types of games are permitted on the platform without an age warning, uh, with age certification to either even participate in the game. I mean, in the real world, in the real in real life, there are age limits and warnings on everything that we buy. So why not? Why are they allowing young people to participate in these military grade weapon games? They look real to me. I don't know. That looked real to me. That didn't look like a game. It didn't look like an animation to me. But anyway, um, I look forward to your questions and comments on this. Um, and if you have the ability or, or the time to listen to it top to bottom, I, there, there are some gems in here. I mean, I apologize for the sound. I, I don't have a choice here. I'm trying to figure out how to share a screen. I've been watching a couple of videos recently to teach me how to do that and download a different app and stuff. But um, the other thing is that this 21-year-old was able to capture 300 top classified documents and spread them all over the internet. I mean, literally, he, he's what, you know, what we call a whistleblower, right? He was leaking the documents. He knew what he was doing. He knew he was spreading information that was classified, but he was doing it anyway. And then when he realized that, um, that he was doing something wrong, he started to bring them home and photograph them from home and upload them from home instead, thinking that that was safe. And then something clicked in his head that, you know what, I'm getting, I'm, I think I'm getting investigated on this. So he started calling all of his friends and say, delete all the contents of our messages, et cetera, et cetera. He started leaking everything. And in fact, it got to the point where he burned his phones, his laptop. He literally broke all of his technology. He realized that he had this aha moment that what he did was, it wasn't a game anymore. I think he got stuck in this loop that what he was doing was exciting. He he knew it was wrong. It was exciting, but I don't think he realized the, the the ramifications because he was online in this gaming setting, not realizing that this game setting that people will share his posts. It wasn't uh, confined to his little chat group anymore. His little chat group, you know, he'd have one or two people in there that were like, wow, this is like really important information. I'm going to share this with my friends. Who's going to share it with another friend? Who's going to share it with another and another friend? I and mean, we all know how that goes. But the point is that there are these groups of, I'm going to, I'm going to still call them children, um, under 18. Um, he was 21 but mostly under 18 playing these games all day long, hours and hours at a time. Some of them are dangerous, violent. Are some of these games hooked up to real life people? Are they really only playing a game? I have to wonder. I look forward to your, your comments about this. I'm not a gamer. I see these advertisements for games that totally turns me off. I don't know what people get the pleasure in playing these games. I mean, maybe they say that about me, like watching TikTok videos, you know. Um, I have no interest in getting online and playing games for hours at a time. It's just a waste of time. But this is what's happening to our young generation. They're stuck playing these games on Discord. So uh, please leave a comment down below if you have ever played one of these video games, um, if you know of people that do, if you've ever been on Discord, what your experience was like there, do, like, do you like it, do you think, do you think it's harmful? So anyway, this is Lorraine Alternative Homesteading, I'm going to upload this, and um, I will post a link to this documentary, I highly recommend you're listening to it, because you can see 
how out of control these young people can be when they're caught up online um, and not seeing the person. They can actually hear their voices. So unlike like during on YouTube where we type in comments, on Discord, you can actually hear a voice. I needed to preface that. Yeah, they can actually hear each other's voices uh, while they're playing these games and stuff. Whether or not they can see each other, I don't know. But they can certainly hear their voices. So the other part of this is that there were warning signs that his uh, agency, and I forget who it is. Let me see. Uh, who his agency was that he worked for. Uh, the, the Air National Guardsmen, okay? There were four or five warning signs that this kid was out of control and he, he really could have, should have been stopped many times before that. So part of the investigation is why didn't the Air National Guardsmen, why didn't they stop this kid? They knew that he was doing stuff that was wrong. They, somebody even commented to him directly on it or suspected him of doing something, but nobody ever put a stop to it. So then I have to wonder, is he a targeted kid? Is Jack Texera, was he a target? Was he being used? I mean, as targeted people, you and I know how that works. Was this kid set up? I don't know. Inquiring minds want to know. So I'm going to sign off for now. I hope you have the time to listen to this 53 minute documentary. It will enlighten you about not only our younger generation, but discord that I was not aware of. And um, how that online forum works. And how, in the words of one of his friends, that when you're on Discord social media a lot, you lose a lot of what normal socialization is.